Hi, Adam here, and welcome to this two-part introduction to the Swedish vowels. In this first part, I will present a brief overview of the vowel system. I will explain important features of the vowels in general that will help you to better understand how the vowels are actually pronounced to prepare you for when they are later explained individually in part two. Sounds good? Great, let's go. First of all, let's have a look at the letters of the alphabet representing vowels, shall we? As you can see, there are nine of them. Remember that the letter Y is always a vowel, and that the letters O, E, and Ö are letters in their own right, not just accented versions of A and O. Now, as for the actual sounds, here are the same vowels written with phonetic symbols. There are two things I want to highlight here. Number one, every vowel can be either short or long. The thing that looks like a colon marks a long vowel. This distinction is phonemic, which means that the meaning of a word will change depending on this quality. It also means that long and short vowels are not perceived to be variations of the same sound by native speakers, but as distinct from each other. Number two, the quality of the vowel is often different for the short and long version of the same pair. For example, as you can see, the symbols for short and long A do not match, and they shouldn't because the actual sounds are not the same. I'm being slightly technical with you here, I'll admit to that, but the reason for this is not to bore you or to scare you off with phonetics, it's to help you, because the more you can understand about how the vowels actually work, the easier it will be for you when you listen to them, when you imitate them, when you finally learn them. Alright, next I want to talk to you about rounded vowels. A rounded vowel is like the name suggests, a vowel pronounced with rounded lips. This is nothing new to anyone speaking a human language, because rounded vowels are everywhere. In English, vowel sounds like the O in boat or the U in cool are rounded. Generally speaking, vowels pronounced in the back of the mouth are often rounded, like in English. In Swedish, there are also front rounded vowels, like in French and German, but we'll get to those later. The thing about rounded vowels that's crucial for learning Swedish is this. You can round a vowel in two ways. To use the technical terms, you can round a vowel by compression or by protrusion. Protrusion is when you round your lips by pouting them as if you were trying to kiss someone. This is usually the normal type of rounding for back vowels. The English words cute, boat, and school are all pronounced with protruded rounding. Say them aloud and notice for yourself how the lips start to pout when you get to the vowel. If you exaggerate, the protruded rounding is even more noticeable. In other languages it's the same thing. German zu and French ku are both pronounced with protruded lip rounding. Which brings us to the other type, compression. Compression is when you round your lips by pursing them slightly inwards without any kind of pouting. It's kind of like when you say the word nope in a really matter-of-factly way. Nope. This type of lip rounding does not exist in English vowels, but it's common in front-rounded vowels around the world. German tür and French bu are both pronounced with compressed rounding. I won't go into the implications of these two types of vowel rounding for the Swedish vowels just yet. But as I'm sure if you already guessed, they are going to matter, because when it comes to rounded vowels, Swedish is kind of messed up. But we're saving that for part two. Okay, the next thing that I want to explain to you is the schwa, which is written phonetically as an upside down E. A schwa is a completely unstressed vowel found abundantly in English. Basically, if you relax your entire mouth and make a noise, that's a schwa. Uh... Most people will recognize it as their sound people make when hesitating, but it's a common sound in English, found in words such as about, supply, photography, and America. Alright, so, with length, quality, roundedness, and schwa covered, we're ready to have a look at the vowels themselves. And by that, this part is over, so thank you for watching, and see you in part two.